Excellent. Come everyone, thank you for coming today. Great to see so many familiar faces and some new ones as well. Um, this is our third multiplier event for the Task for Current T4C project. Um, so this is actually our final event that will be like this. And what will happen is we have, as you know, three more months of the project where we'll be running workshops uh, every week in this space. Uh, and this will continue to be a co-working space as well. So you're free to come uh, every week on a Tuesday between 9 and 3-ish, uh, depending on the week, um, to work from here um, to get advice, uh, either financial advice, accounting advice, uh, business advice, um, or anything to do with Croatian bureaucracy. Um, on that note, we have a representative from Grad Split with us today, Radojka. I'm going to hand it over to her because she's actually heading off to Rome today, I hear. Shopping is Radojka. Thank you. So, good morning to everybody. Dobar dan svima. Pregledala sam listu. Vidjela sam da ipak ima više ljudi koji govore ovde engleski, tako da ću ja preći na engleski jezik, ali evo prvo sam htjela pozdraviti na našem jeziku. So, good morning to everybody. Uh, my name is Radeka Tomašević. I'm the head of sector for international and EU projects. Within which sector this project was actually designed and later on now implemented. A bit more about the project will... Uh, who is the project manager and he will give a bit more information about the project itself. I can just say that this co-working space, as you call it now, actually was in a very bad shape uh, what, a year ago. And we have managed through two different EU projects to actually completely refurbish it and, and equip it, as you can see today. The first project was uh, done through the uh, city of Split and this building itself, I mean, Multicultural Center Split. Uh, they actually had funding to refurbish it and we equipped it through the project as for uh, Our vision with this project, but also many other projects that we are implementing at the moment, is the idea that Split is not only good for tourism, but it can also be a hub for entrepreneurship in particular young entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs and also, as we call them, nomads who really like to come to our city because they enjoy living here, but now we also manage to open the space for your use as well. Uh, I must say that uh, in the future we have more action a huge space uh, be prepared also for the entrepreneurship. We just uh, this morning heard that we signed the contract to start building technological part of uh, park split, which is going to be in Dracevac and the entrance of the of the city. So the idea is that people who start working here can actually move on and become a larger companies in those spaces that the uh, city of split, uh, split will provide. I have to say that this project actually that we are implementing now uh, is done in very good cooperation with the NGO Cedra and Michael is also kind of uh, part of that NGO and we have developed a very good uh, relationship with them. They help us implement this project. Many activities are being done by Cedra and Tony Erkovic together with me are in regular contact with with that organization and we hope that this partnership will continue in the future and that we will manage to have a bit more projects of this kind uh, in uh, and I'm going to the kickoff meeting in Rome and we are starting a very interesting project which is not really um, usual here in this area. We are starting to see the possibility opening community gardens actually developing policies, at least with the pilot project, that we will have community gardens in the future. So this is the reason why I'm traveling. And, and just again, I just thought to maybe share with you a story, very funny story. I actually started funding this project when I was in a high school. I was in an economic school right next in the neighborhood. And at that time, they started building this. And this was a um, Dom Mladich let's say, so youth, at that time we were fundraising from students, from the scholars actually funding to start building this building. And this building was in a very bad shape, it's still part of it and it's a very bad shape, but it's in my heart personally. So many future projects that we are trying now to, um, let's say, promote 
for the future EU funding from the operational programs for the new financial perspective, but also from the interact programs, are actually uh, being uh, being designed in a way that we can continue improving this building. And we hope we are uh, working on solar energy now with the project for the solar energy. So in a way, if we don't find the money to refurbish it straight away as a whole, we will do it like we did now, piece by piece, bit by bit, but we will get there and this is going to be a beautiful center for you, to, uh, hopefully in the near future. So thank you. I hope you will enjoy your workshop here and uh, we invite you to stay with us and to actually add to our development. Thank you. Thank you, Radojka. Enjoy uh, Rome, uh, Rome and the community, community gardens. Much needed here. We have a lot of green space in Split that's being underutilized. And I know there's a lot of support for the community gardens. Um, let's carry on with the theme of Grad Split. Um, you've met this guy many times before. Um, he's involved in a number of projects, very hardworking. Um, so let's meet Tony to tell us a bit more about this project. Tony. Hello everyone, uh, it's really nice to see you here in uh, such a great number, uh, even though those times with epidemiological measures, I hope this will end soon and uh, it's too bad we didn't have any more uh, events like this uh, because of it, some of them were online but we do what we must do. So uh, I'm glad to hear that uh, this, this building is uh, funded, started to be built by the pupils and uh, it takes so long. But uh, at the end, uh, I guess uh, we are making, we are coming to the end and uh, that's, that's the beautiful part. Uh, and about this project. So it started uh, as uh, uh, we applied to uh, to funding because uh, at the time in Europe was uh, the problem of migration of people who are starting to here to work and uh, it it was supposed to make people adapt uh, more and uh, open new business because uh, people have problems when they come to the new country and they have to find a job. And one of the ways to find a job is actually to make one for yourself. So uh, that's how it started. Um, actually, at the time, Split uh, didn't have migration problems. I don't think we have it right now. Uh, if to, to be honest, but uh, we are getting so many people who are coming here to visit us touristically and then they decide to stay here. Uh, I guess they like Croatia very, very much and the city of Split because it's, it has some touch of, of touristic destination, but it also has a touch of a peaceful city with not so many uh, people, but I guess it will also change in the future because everyone is coming here as I can see you, uh, many of you here from the another country. So um, uh, I'm I'm really glad that uh, you have been involved in the project and uh, about what we planned and what we done. Uh, as you heard before, we made this space as a starting point to uh, for you to come to get help to open some business and uh, to have advice uh, from uh, local uh, people uh, who will who who will have uh, who will be gathered here here and who will have experience with uh, foreigners and who will somehow guide you to the right direction and i hope we are doing it uh, good so it started with this space and uh, uh, we had many workshops, many meetings like this, uh, which also helps us to get to meet each other uh, and network. And it's a really, really good uh, way to uh, help each other because every single of us has some problem uh, which uh, has to deal in this uh, administrative system in Croatia and uh, when you can share it how you dealt with that uh, someone will uh, get the idea how can manage the problem and uh, I really hope that you like that uh, so we are 
getting it on. Uh, we'll provide uh, workshops and everything uh, by the end of this project for sure. And after it, we'll try to really make some uh, extension of this on some kind. I guess it won't be as uh, regularly as uh, it's now, but uh, we'll try to make it something. And we are trying to uh, expand this entrepreneurship uh, story to be even bigger uh, as a part of the project we left like two months uh, from now it ended 30th of uh, november uh, this year and uh, the last thing we did is a tender like a public procurement process for the external cell services who will help us to make an action plan for uh, actually doing all of this uh, they will help us and uh, i we will have to have it in two months like action plan which uh, will be adopted by the mayor and uh, that's how we will plan uh, the future development of this um, your inputs your feedbacks you have been given uh, all the way uh, through this moment uh, we will use that to make a good action plan and uh, that will be some start uh, of course nothing can be promised but we are really trying to do uh, the best to make this story uh, good and to make this story bigger um, and that's basically it by the project um, which has to be done like the action plan is like our last uh, thing to do and uh, I hope you really had. Uh, we we have in program. Uh, we'll listen your uh, uh, your experiences. Uh, so so we will see what uh, you have been done and what's your uh, how do you like it and uh, maybe then that will also be used in the action plan. So that's about it. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm here and you can ask me now or even later. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. So as Tony said, yes, yeah, so this project actually has been running for a few years. However, the, this part of the project that some of you have been involved in has now been running for the past year. And as some of you know, we started in person, then we're online, then we're in person, then we're over there, and then we're over here, and then we're online and then we had lunch, and then we had food, and today there's more food. Um, but that's not really the important part. The important part is um, the community that we have here um, and the support that we offer each other, as Tony said. Uh, one person that has contributed massively to that community, both the people here, plus people in America, Canada, Australia, Argentina, Chile, UK, Bosnia, Serbia, Angola, Cameroon, I don't know, I don't know. Um, most of you know her. It's Sarah Dyson from Expat in Croatia. Round of applause, please. I'm trying to juggle these two things at the same time. Hi. Hi, everybody. Good morning. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm supposed to talk into this. I haven't actually talked into a microphone before. This is a, this is a first for me. Uh, thank you all for coming. Oh, hi. Uh, so for those who don't know me, my name is Sarah Dyson. I am an American, well, Texan first, but American second. And I moved to Croatia in 2012. Uh, I didn't know anything and I didn't have any ties to the country whatsoever. And because I'm a very curious person, that didn't last very long. So I started a blog called Expat in Croatia in 2013. Um, it is an online portal that has extensive English language resources about running a business, getting residence, citizenship, real estate, healthcare, uh, language and culture. Yes. Um, and also to further help the community, I have personally vetted a network of creation professionals around the country, lawyers and translators and real estate agents and tax advisors and accountants. So it's a great way to match foreigners to creation owned businesses here. So not only does it help foreigners find people who are reliable and trusted, but also it helps bring money into the local economy. So, 
Uh, we're very happy about that. Um, also, I do personal consulting uh, to do one-on-one uh, -on -one advice with people who are trying to transition to Croatia. And I'm very happy to share that we just added a new concierge service here in Split with my brand new colleague, Lucia. Lucia, wave to the nice people. Yes, she can make just about anyone's dream come true. <laughs> um, so yeah, so even though uh, Expat and Croatia started as a blog in 2013, we grew exponentially just in the last three years. And that is all thanks to MOOP, which I know <laughs> sounds kind of odd, but it's true. It's absolutely true. Um, in 2018, I was applying for a permanent residence and they required me to be employed by a Croatian business. And so I was like, well, okay. Uh, so I opened one and I hired myself and here we are. Um, and I had curiously dreamed and toyed with the idea of turning this little blog that could into an actual business that I could do all day. Cause anyone who's ever met me or read anything I've written or met someone that knows me knows that I am in love with this country and love talking about it. So doing it for an actual job seems like a really cool idea if I could make it work. And si since Moop gave me this little push to actually open a business, um, I was like, okay, well, it's now or never. I got to kind of figure this out. I got to pay my salary. So let's see, let's see what we can do. Um, and three years later, here we are. And uh, there's a lot of things that kind of contributed to that. Now, I have to say this because I know that Michael has talked ad nauseum about how if you want to get residents by opening up a company, you have to hire three full-time creations. You have to invest 200,000 kuna in the business. You have to pay yourself an elevated salary. For reasons beyond my understanding, Mook did not make me do that. Now, I don't know. I, <laughs> I would like to say it was just my winning smile, but um, I really don't know what it is. The only thing that I can assume is because I'd already been here for six years at that point. I wasn't applying for temporary residence. I was applying for permanent residence. So that's the only thing that I can think of. I don't, I don't know any secrets. I don't know one in MOOP who can get anyone out of it. But, but I will say that doesn't mean that you can't have success here in Croatia, even with those, with those requirements. Um, it is possible. Now, to talk about how Expat and Croatia grew, there are several things that happened in Croatia that were pretty major. So we found ourselves in this kind of perfect storm. In 2020, uh, there were uh, some major changes to the law on citizenship. One of those was they made it drastically easier for people with Croatian heritage to apply for citizenship here. They removed the limitation on how many uh, generations back you could go, and then they also uh, removed the language requirement. So that has brought a lot of interest from diaspora here coming to Croatia. Next, we had major changes to the law on foreigners one of which was the digital nomad permit. So who here is on the digital nomad permit or applying for it? All right, less than I would have expected actually. Um, okay, uh, well, so we've got all these digital nomads coming. And then, um, you know, because of the pandemic, a lot of people were like, I want to radically change my life. I'm not really digging what's on here, I change, I want to move. And a lot of people came to Croatia as a result of that. And uh, in addition to the people who are applying for citizenship now and the digital nomads, we also have people who just couldn't get into any other country. <laughs> and so Croatia let them in and they're here now too. And all of them need help with bureaucracy. So that is where expat and Croatia steps in and we have helped them. Now, because uh, we didn't have to hire three full-time people from the very beginning, it allowed us to grow our business naturally. So I hired my first Croatian citizen in 2019 after about a little more than a year. And then this year hired another Croatian citizen and another EU citizen. And as soon as I find the time to write job descriptions, we'll be hiring more. Um, but I'm very grateful that we were allowed or given the opportunity to grow naturally. Um, but, you know, I'm an exception to the rule. There are lots of people that do have to go through um, the steep requirements that are in place. But that's not, to, that's not to say that it's impossible. And a good example is Brooklyn Bagel. Who knows Brooklyn Bagel and Splits? Okay. So 
they had to hire three full-time creations from the very beginning. That was, they had to meet all of those requirements. And while having a bagel shop is not a new idea, it is a new idea in split. So because of that, they were able to grow a business. Now they have two shops and now they're kicking butt. And so it is absolutely possible. Now, if you're going to open a business in Croatia, you've got to have a solid plan. And tourism is no longer a safe bet. There are still a lot of people who are like, oh, I'm going to buy an apartment. I'm going to buy a sailboat uh, and rent it out to tourists. So like, but that's, that's no longer a sure thing. What Croatia needs is not tourism businesses. Croatia needs businesses that are opened year round and that serve locals, that serve Croatians first and tourists second. So by following that plan, you can find something that is going to work. And aside from having a plan, it's also incredibly vital that you research what it means to have a creation business, which the fact that you're even here at this means that you're already doing that. If you've been working with T4C, you already have learned way more than you probably would have <laughs> otherwise. Um, this is an extremely vital service uh, that has been going on for the last year. We have, um, we have a series on expat and Croatia called Five Things to Know Before Opening a Creation Business. We've done about four of them. Michael wrote our last one. And it's full of these little surprises that you find through operating a creation business. Many of them were just because my accountant came to me one day. is like, oh, well, now you have to do this. Like, oh. Surprises when operating a creation business are rarely candy filled. So you really want to make sure that you know as much as possible so that way you can plan for them because they sometimes can just derail you. Um, but that's why this program is so great. That's why we do everything that we can at Expat and Croatia to help um, inform people so that they don't get surprised. And sometimes that information can be a little discouraging and the expat groups can be discouraging but don't listen to them because there are things that are possible. I feel like what you hear in those tend to be a little uh, Debbie Downer, but that doesn't mean that things aren't possible. So um, no, I don't remember the other things I was going to say. Oh yeah, the future, the future. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so the future. <laughs> At Expand Creation, what we're doing for the future is we're going to continue to offer resources that are going to support and inform foreign entrepreneurs, well as, as well as local entrepreneurs, because there's a lot of creations that follow us as well. And something that we want to focus on is talking to more Croatian entrepreneurs, because they've been working in the system for much longer than we have. They are a wealth of knowledge. They know tons of ticks, tr tr tricks, <laughs> tips and advice and methods of legally navigating the system so that you can grow. And one example that I love to share is the place where I get my haircut. I get my haircut at a place called Frame Beauty Habitat. And I've been going there since 2013. And when I first went there, it was Angela, the owner. She was just this one chair salon in this little tiny pocket in Diocletian's palace. And now, eight years later, she has a two-story salon with a fleet of employees. So it is absolutely possible to grow businesses here. And there are success stories if we choose to find them, to look for them. So I think we really should also try and, and seek more of the knowledge of the local people here who have had success. Now, there's something else that I want to share, uh, because sleeping three hours a night is just simply too much. Um, Michael and I and two of the lawyers in our network are working with a member of parliament to change the law on foreigners, because it's just not perfect yet, right? Uh, so there's a few things that we're doing. One, we're tackling the three creation, three full-time creation requirements. That's the biggest thing. Uh, next, we're trying to incentivize new graduates uh, who are going to university here so that they don't leave, so that we can keep highly skilled, highly educated people in Croatia. And last is we're coming up with a new residence permit. I'm not going to say what it is yet because we're just not far enough down the pike for that. But 
we are very, very excited that it's going to be presented by this member of parliament to parliament in the new session, which starts tomorrow, I believe. So as we have more information about that, uh, I will be sharing that with all of you. Um, I, all of us are seeking prosperity here in Croatia, whether we're foreigners or whether we're locals. And um, I believe that that's something we can do. And I'm really excited to see all the businesses that it will come out of T4C. Um, and I, I, I'm excited for the future. So thank you guys for listening. Thank you to Michael for letting me blather up here for a bit. And uh, see you around Split. Am I not going? Any questions? Oh, questions. <laughs> What's the new permit? <laughs> <laughs> you can't know yet. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Run away, run away. Excellent. Thank you, Sarah. Yes, yeah, some exciting stuff coming up, fingers crossed. Hopefully, we've got the right member of parliament who knows the way around things. Um, but yeah, there's um, there's always things that are things that are going on in the background um, that. I guess um, in in all in all cases, right? As you know, for your own personal lives, your own professional lives, uh, within the government, within Grad Split, where Tony just went, um, there's always stuff going on in the background. Um, and as soon as we have updates, then we'll share them with you through the usual channels, through Fred Lives on Instagram with Expat in Croatia, or through the T4C group as well. Um, now we're going to move on to a, a, a newer arrival in Croatia, um, who's worked extremely well with locals and foreigners alike. Um, and actually, I'm inviting two lovely leaders up. We have Monica Ionatescu and we have Maya Kustets, or Kustets, Kustet, Kustets. I didn't know if I forgot the accents. Thank you, Michael. So a stylish welcome from my part. I am Monica Ionatescu and I'm the owner of Lifestyle Check-in. I will start with an invitation for B2B, of course bringing Croatian and international together in our next event in Zagreb, in Esplanade. So what is Lifestyle Check-In? We are working with the embassies who are accredited in Croatia, and we invite them to present their best entrepreneurs. And then the Chamber of um, Economic of Croatia comes and make the perfect match so if you are interested to get for example contacts to austrians you don't have to go to austria because they are coming to you so if you are interested to get contacts to the slovenians for example to our next event you don't have to go to slovenia you can stay here enjoy just uh, look at our list and say okay this entrepreneur is interesting and come at our event it is a new concept of bringing like um, business diplomacy together in Croatia. And our vision is a big one. We want to make Dalmatia a hotspot for lifestyle in the whole world. Why? Because we believe that we have here everything that every other country has and even more. So the people come, businesses, joys, and stay maybe a little bit longer. I will show you now one of our videos because I really think that this part shows much more than what we are doing than anything else. And I hope that you can get just a little bit of our feeling in this. So until now, we made events with the Austrian embassy in the Radisson Split that you will see now, with the Romanian embassy in Le Meridian Love, and now with the Slovenian embassy in Esplanade Zagreb bring this really, really good mood and surprisingly new projects with a lot of money to Croatia. Well, if the technique would also function, then we can present you in some, in some moments one of our videos. With lifestyle sector and the lifestyle industry, which is one of the biggest in the world, and with new products and new money and new business here in Dalmatia. So the companies who are coming from abroad try also to test their products here. And this is why they are looking for Croatian companies who can let them with us. 
I think uh, Sarah is a beautiful example. And Sarah, I love your newsletter. I always read it <laughs> to, see, to see what happens. But also, they are looking to so many different parts, not only fashion. Lifestyle is not only beauty. Lifestyle is yachting. Lifestyle is with energy. Lifestyle is the way we want to live and have a good and prosperous so if you are interested to connect with international company who wants to come to Croatia and make business with you, you can join us. And also the great Croatian company who wants to test something in the other uh, countries that we are working with. Our vision is pretty big and um, it would be possible to fans like this with international media without um, very big local support and our success is actually part of Michael's success too because Michael was the first person I contact when I came here and I also thought that maybe he thinks I'm haunting him because I was just, you know calling him like two or three times a day Michael 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 I have a question Michael <laughs> But uh, he helped me each time. So this is why a project like this is just amazing for experts like me who are new here. They want to do so much, but they really don't know where to start. And so I'm very thankful for all your support, Michael, that you gave and that you still got on the phone, even the sixth or the seventh time when I was calling. I love Dalmatia and I really hope that I can improve together with the locals, a wonderful lifestyle sector here. Anyway, uh, this is just one part of that what we do. And now I would like to introduce you to my Croatian business partner, <laughs> Maya Kustec, who will present to you uh, our new unique uh, project in Dalmatia, who will be also supported by uh, European foundings. Thank you, ev everybody. And I really hope to see you again, at least at the Stylish Coffee. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, I'm so nervous, sorry. Uh, <laughs> this is my first presentation. So my name is Maya Kustets, and uh, I am uh, the new sales director for Lifetime Czechy. So we want today to represent a new international highlights project, uh, our beautiful bungalows. Uh, we will build uh, the stylish house and uh, I'm so proud to present. Uh, this is the first time we uh, put uh, in the public. Uh, I will explain a little bit later. I want to tell you a few words about that. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, with the events we are holding, uh, we are also planning to build a new concept of bungalows for women that will be unique in Croatia. This will be a center that will offer psychological help for women, all ages, nationality and backgrounds. For example, psychological help uh, for COVID, uh, infertility and uh, many other issues and God knows we have a lot of issues. On the other side, we want to help women uh, to start a new life, create a new business or learn new skills. We want this project in Dalmatia with a count that wants to provide land for the project and project and we would build bungalows from UA funds. This will be a support center that will be working through the entire year. We are proud to the uh, U European endorses our project and the region of Dalmatia for providing land to build support center for women of Europe. Uh, what can be beautiful than start a new life on the sunny shores of Dalmatia? Bungalow, bungalow name will be embraced. For project, we need a land of 1,000 square meters for using on 19 uh, years. Uh, top price is 200,000 euro, and this is a pilot project with a capacity that can offer 10 women the opportunity to live there three months. We are always open to work with new partners and cooperation, and uh, if anyone wants to involve with the project, we can contact us directly.
So I will show you now. Here is we we will have the office uh, and this is the uh, uh, the room for uh, <clears throat> for yoga events and uh, for every days uh, here is a small uh, uh, room with a kitchen and the living area with beds and showers and this part is administration uh, so we will have a pool so we can have a very nice uh, stylish events and uh, I hope so uh, this project will go uh, next year. And uh, so I thank uh, Monica for this opportunity. And uh, I hope so we will see each other again. Thank you and uh, enjoy and the rest of the events. Um, I'm going to start the questions. Monica, can you tell us, obviously, you've been here for, what is it, two, three years? Almost two years. Now. Almost two years. Okay, cool. So, obviously, arriving here... Yeah, yeah, when I ask the question. Uh, obviously, arriving here over the last two years, you've got involved in a lot, right? You opened your company. You're still opening your Udruga. Which one? Don't open an Udruga. It's at least one. Um, and so I just wondered what it was like in terms of the B2B, the importance of B2B, and also the connection with locals that you've created. So actually, the part with the B2B came later. <laughs> when I came here, my first uh, connection was really the expats because uh, I, didn't, I didn't know the language. I knew everything about the law that you can read about. Didn't understand most of them, but anyway... <laughs> I was I was informed and um, by speaking with the experts and by hearing their stories, I understood that if I want to be successful and to stay here and make for a long plan, then I have to speak more with the locals. Then I need also the local support and also the um, B2B part. So this is how I started. I really made just an appointment to the Chamber of Commerce. I didn't know anybody. And on that day, the director of the international projects were not there. So I had really the luck or destiny to speak with Mr. Jose Tomas, who is the director. And I presented him my vision. He made just bigger and bigger eyes. But then he said one thing. Yes, I believe in the lifestyle sector in Dalmatia. And I think we have a possibility to, to support the country to get more uh, um, quality companies here that can support even more the locals. And this was my first like wow effect, like little success that gave me the possibility to um, go a um, step farther. And also, actually, I made the, the events for the beginning just, just general. I was thinking, okay. B to C, everybody is welcome. And then I understood that the company who presents wants contacts to here, to the companies here, not general people who are coming and buying. That okay, let's start with the B2B. Let's bring international companies here and let um, the Chamber of Commerce match them like perfect dating, but in the business, uh, in the business way. And let's try to do something and Actually, they are like little success. For example, a company makes beautiful jewelry or beautiful fashion who wants to try to go also in Austria that we have. Okay, they meet, they speak, and then they try, okay, I buy from you five clothes, I buy from you 10 jewelries, and this is how things start. It doesn't hear like much, but it's a beginning. And then you have the possibility to grow the business, to know more people, and to um, have maybe new new visions and new new ways of uh, of acting. And the brainstorming at these B two Bs are amazing because you come with one idea, and then the entrepreneurs from different countries speak and say, "Hey, but what if you would do it in this other way? Like we we saw this maybe also in another country." And this is actually what is the wow effect of the B2B, of Croatian coming together with international and building new concepts, new ways of living, of acting, of, uh, of being successful. And it's just, my, it's just my fourth event, Michael. I mean, I'm still learning. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a long way to go, but uh, we, are, we are excited uh, about that. And to each new event that we are making, we, we are growing. 
and uh, we are um, bringing also new companies here. Yeah. Yes. Uh, on the Bungal, mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned that you're planning to build with the EU funds. Mm -hmm. Is that funding secured? And if so, what uh, other opportunities are you looking for uh, you know, with businesses? What would that help you? Need? Well, we presented this project to the uh, Creative Europe uh, project, one of the um, managements from that, and they liked very much the idea because it's different. It's not a big villa like normally we have in, in Dalmatia. It's something little that uh, can offer this kind of support. So yes, the money for the building, the 200,000, will come from the Creative Europe project on that part. For this, you need to put 20% your own money and the rest is founded. What we still need, this is secure. Of course, you have to prove what you do and you don't get all the money from the beginning. It's 50,000 euro. You start building, you prove that you really built, they come and see, and then you get again 50,000 euro. And this is how it, how it goes. The issue that we have is actually with the land from the counties because we need to have one county who said, okay, we give you minimum 1,000 meter quadrat for minimum 50 years, maximum 90 years on that part. Uh, with the ones uh, we spoke for was um, in Solin and Dugopolie, and this one have already worked with European project. They know about it. They like very much the idea of having something that goes the whole year, and it's... All, almost also belong to them because after 50 years, if they don't like it, they can say, okay, this is our land. You can go, or if we are successful, say, hey, we had the first pilot project in Dalmatia in our county for that and even get more money for the next European project that they apply for. So this is the vision. We are still working on it, but uh, we hope to be successful. And I think, I mean, Dalmatia is perfect for women to come to really get uh, well again, you know, with, with the support of, uh, of a psychologue, but also with the support of the nature that you just have here and feel good. And in the other step for the women who says, okay, now we are fit and we want to start a new life, we can give support to help them in opening a, uh, a new company, in learning a new skill. But this is uh, in the future. For the moment, we are just um, concentrating on uh, on building it first. And then we will, of course, look for cooperations with uh, with Croatian companies and also especially with them who, lo who works with expats. <laughs> <laughs> can help us a little bit. No, I'm kidding. Everybody is really welcome and we can do projects like this just together in a team. And this is why our name is also embraced like a big hug. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. This is our <laughs> Thank you very much, Monica and Maya. So uh, some good examples there. Yeah, first of all, networking business to business, um, not just here locally, uh, not just in Dalmatia, but Croatia-wide and then regional as well. Monica comes from Romania originally, uh, lived in Austria as well. So she's created these contacts throughout her career and now she's kind of maximizing them, right? And that's something I think we can all do um, using our experience and our network from before and maximizing that. Um, we're going to move on now to someone else that most of you know. Um, somebody who's very strict with numbers um, and doesn't take shit from anyone. Uh, it's Sanya from Rani Brojevi. Round of applause for Sanya, please. Hi, everybody. I see some familiar faces in the first row. That's good. So I'm going to be short. I just wanted to introduce myself to those who don't know me yet. Okay, so I'm a resident accountant here at this project. Some of you already know me and have worked with me. Uh, I just wanted to say that I highly recommend coming here when we have our meetings at Tuesdays because through experience working with you in the last couple of months, uh, you know, it's Croatian citizens have a trouble of putting everything together in the picture when it comes to taxes, forms, paperwork, uh, and especially foreigners because are not familiar with our culture and everything that goes on in, here, in Croatia. 
So, for example, even before I had experience with uh, people opening companies and then not working for months in them and then saying, oh, can you do my accounting now? And I'm like, what have you been doing in the last couple of months? Well, I didn't have any income, therefore I don't pay any taxes, right? I'm like, no, no. Croatian government need wants its candy, right? So you are always liable for something once you open something in Croatia, not just from paperwork, but <laughs> from money and other stuff. It can be, we can come to a conclusion that you don't owe anything, if I, if I get all the information from you, but you need to give me or your accountant all the information. So I always recommend sitting person in person with a professional, even if you open something like in, in English, I suppose that's called some lump trade. It's a very simple business model and it's very, very popular. A lot of people are using it, not just Croatians, but foreigners as well. And the reason why it's very popular is because you don't actually have to hire a lot of other professionals like accountants and things like this because it's very easy to manage. But that doesn't mean you don't have to do anything, right? So I had people coming to me from this project saying, okay, can I just sit with you for a couple of hours and just go through everything? And that worked perfectly. Better than email, better than Zoom, better than anything else. Obviously, if you can't come here, Zoom can be uh, an alternative or email or something like that. We can always keep in touch, right? So if you're not using some lab trade, you are using either a company or a standard trade, let's call it. A company meaning DO or GDO. In that case, you need an accountant as opposed to a paušal niobert. Which, you, which where you can do everything on your own if you can manage or want to manage it. A lot of people choose to outsource certain kind of paperwork to a professional, but you can manage it on your own if you have time. With a DO or GDO, you have to have an accountant, not because it's required by law, but because you can't do it on your own. There's just too many things to do. When it comes to choosing an accountant, you have to, I recommend going with friends' recommendations because there's an issue in Croatia of accountants uh, not having to have a license, which is a big problem for a lot of people who uh, found out months in or years in that their accountants didn't do everything they needed to do. I would definitely, uh, if I was you, ask around for friends recommendations and also for recommendations of accountants who deal with the business activity you deal in because sometimes accountants specialize in some certain business activities and that's not that's good not just because they know the accounting part but because they know people in certain offices they know how to get to that paper and that paper easier than somebody who doesn't have the experience the accountant doesn't have the experience in that activity so uh, be careful also of people who try to give you a cheaper price. I wouldn't go with accountants <laughs> who are, uh, you know, trying to say, okay, I can do this for a small amount of money. I would be very suspicious of that. Uh, and like I said, go with the recommendation because I also had people from this project coming to me and saying they were dissatisfied with their accountants. And when I looked into it, they had a very good reason to be dissatisfied. And then I helped them with some things. Uh, what you can get here on these Tuesdays, for example, or some other day via Zoom or other way of communication, I can help you if, for example, you don't know what's good for you between GDO, DEO, Obert, which is trade. Uh, I can help you with the steps of opening Obert or a company, what you have to look into after registration. So, for example, I have foreigners who open a company somewhere else. And in that uh, country, for example, nobody asks any, anything from you for the first couple of months or until some kind of profit threshold. In Croatia, you really, I really recommend doing everything how it's supposed to be, 
just to get everybody from off your back, right? And then you can focus on your business activity instead of paperwork. What did I want to say? What did I want to say? I'm not sure. Because accounting, I could speak for days, and I just wanted to use this opportunity for those who don't know me yet to say that I'm here. You can ask me questions. I don't know everything, but if I don't know something, I will tell you and tell you possibly, hopefully, where to get that information. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Yes. You have kind of a matrix, like, okay, you have a goal, you have an Uber, you have the taxes, you're the accountant, you need accountants, you don't need accountants, like, you know, kind of a scheme, yeah, there you go. Oh, so I would say this, to simplify. Uh, for anything other than Pauschal Niobert, you need an accountant, okay? If you are Pauschal Niobert, some lump trade... No, no, I, I don't need to explain, don't need to explain this now, but because there are many possibilities. Okay. Like, a, I don't know, like a question, like the document you can see, something, can be calculated or... Oh, like, um, I understand what you mean. Uh, well, for example, that is a... We have a uh, platform with some kind of information. I'm building a platform on my own with information that can be useful to people to track steps, opening different kinds of models. But this example is the reason why we're here. You can tell me as a foreigner what you need. Because as a creation, I have a creation mindset. I'm just going to do this course that I'm already doing from my own stand of point of view, right? But this is actually a good thing for us to brainstorm what you would need. And I, then I can put a module on this platform explaining what you need, right? Giving you an answer. So you can actually, we can actually stay. I will be here obviously after this presentation and we can go through. Everybody here can ask me something, but we can uh, discuss this further. Is there any other question? Great. I'm really happy when there are questions. <laughs> Thank you, Sonia. Thank you. But Sonia, you know what normally happens. Everyone has a question. No one wants to ask it. And then afterwards, they'll all come to you and ask while you've got like, I don't know, a Sonia Rajot ball in your mouth. Yeah? <laughs> you don't have to be. OK. Um, so we're going to break the norm today. Uh, normally, it's Marin that gives you paperwork. But today, I'm going to give some of you uh, some paperwork to do uh, while I do my presentation, because that's the only way to get you to do work, I found out last time we had this event. <laughs> so if you've ever used the one-stop shop, please take one of these papers. Marin and Tony will give you a pen. And while I'm speaking, you can fill it out. Thank you very much. If you haven't, if you haven't uh, ever used it before, feel free to take one, but you don't need to necessarily fill it out. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm Michael. Um, I think most of you know me. I'm Michael. So I was employed on this project one day a week through Udragat Cedra Split. Um, Cedra Split is a nonprofit organization that works around regional and local development, um, especially in the fields of entrepreneurship, social entrepreneurship, and they're now looking at doing stuff with STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and not yet, engineering and mathematics. Um, and Cedra Split have been quite a um, quite a force to a certain degree in Split and Dalmatia, and actually across Croatia. Uh, the guy who runs it is well networked, uh, and he's worked a lot with Dom Ladich on Gradimo Dom Zajedno, the first project that helped renovate this place, and now on T for C. Um, working, uh, I've I've been here for six years. Okay, I've I've lived in Croatia for six years, and from Fairly early on, I started interacting with the business community uh, because that was my background. Uh, I started business at university. I've always been involved in either um, sales or fundraising. 
um, and also social enterprise development. That's my background. So when I came here, there was a lot of informal talk about business. And then over time, um, I had more and more people um, get connected to me. So this project was kind of a, a natural progression in a way, uh, thanks to Marin headhunting me and bringing me back into the fold of Croatian Udruga, which isn't always fun. Um, so I thought I would share with you five things I've learned through T4C. Um, first of all, it's been fantastic working with all of you. Um, it's been really, really nice. I, I don't live in Split anymore. I live in the middle of nowhere um, where my neighbor is a 71-year-old granny who walks her sheep around. Um, so my community isn't huge over there. I do have a good uh, social community, but professional community was kind of patchy. But through this project, I met a, a, a whole range of people, um, which is one of the best things about working with you guys, because we are a pretty experienced group. Yeah. When we look at the other partners on this project, they're in like Austria, Poland, Germany. Now they're dealing a lot with under 30s, um, say refugee slash migrant groups, people that have actually escaped or maybe uh, flee, uh, flee zones to find a new country. Whereas our cohort, if you look around, um, I think most people are here by choice, I think. Um, and we've got all different ages, all different expertise, all different backgrounds, and that's been really valuable. I know that a few of you have connected in between each other to share this experience further, to really support each other. So that's one of the, one of the uh, great things about this group. So if you look around now, have a look around, have a look around, see who you don't know. Yeah, and if you don't know someone, try and talk to them later on when we have some food. Um, next up is we cover all sectors, right? People often say, ah, oh, you live in Split, you work in tourism. No, not everyone does, right? So I'm going to now point at you, and you're going to tell me what sector you're working, okay? Just to show you how amazing we are. Okay, let's start with Sarah. Sarah, what sector do you do work in? I don't know. You don't? <laughs> Um, I guess business consultancy and people and advice, something like that. I don't know. Okay, Roxana, Roxana, what sector? Decoration. Home decoration. Uh, art. art is yeah, art. Oh, you with Sarah? Um, let's. Healthcare. 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 Social media. Healthcare. 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 Events. Events. Biologist. EU funds, EU funds and. Uh, industrial design. Industrial design. Uh, IT technology investment, IT, environmental products, <laughs> glutes, tin, beauty, uh, Heidi, what sector? Fashion, doctor, healthcare, uh, Dundee. Um, okay, we have some, we have three representatives from uh, Padma. One, two, three, and we also have a researcher right at the back. Yeah. Uh, tourism. tourism. Social enterprise. Uh, culture tech. Culture tech. <laughs> yes, you know it now. Sector. Do you have a sector? I'm looking at you. Yes. Ecology. Julia. <laughs> IT writing, Alan. And uh, <laughs> Alex, yeah, yeah, good, Samir, <laughs> excellent, Sanya, uh, everything. everything, she covers everything, yeah, so you see, we've, we're covering, uh, what about you, yeah, what about you, tourism, excellent, yeah, so we cover all sectors, right, um, one, of the, one of the misconceptions is that everyone in Split works in tourism, it's it's wrong. It's wrong. Um, but what's funny about us is not many people we know exist. I told you the story before on uh, the Facebook page of uh, the Udruga Glas Podozenica, the voice of entrepreneurs. When I said that there's a lot of foreigners living here, everyone was like, no, there aren't. What, three? And I was like, no, there are loads of them. Yeah, they're only here for summer with their apartments. Actually, no, this is my company. And not many people know we exist. 
it doesn't quite help when the Merrill split can't come to the event, but that's for other reasons. Um, to, and also press to actually share what's going on, right? So that's up for us to say, hey, we're here, we do matter, um, and change the law so other people can settle in and grow more organically. Um, and yeah, like I said, that's something that not many people like to shout about too much, especially going back five or six years, yeah, when you were the alien. But now we have many aliens here. Yeah, so we're actually, you know, we're a community now. We can support each other. Um, and that's something I've seen through this project. Um, going a bit more negative now. So I have been contacted over the last year with a whole range of questions. Um, some stuff that obviously I, I didn't know, like, what do you need to open up a business as a personal trainer? I had no idea when someone asked me that. Um, what do I need to open up if I want to sell soap? And what kind of structure do I need to sell soap? I didn't know that. So I started having to find these connections in um, either Chamber of Commerce kind of thing or uh, Croatian government support, Grad Split, Jupania. And I noticed two things. There are superstars. You need to find them. Yeah, They're not always easy to find. Sometimes you have to email 10 people to have one person respond to you. And if they respond in English, well, like even better. But I always say to them in the email, hey, you can respond in Croatian, because I know that some people will Google Translate, and it's easier, right? It's easier to communicate in your own language. Um, because you also know the information you give is 100% correct then, right? Like when I write, I often write in English, because Croatian probably asks them for a completely different thing. Um, but you need to get rid of the bottleneck. In every public institution, in every organization possibly, there's always that bottleneck, that person that holds everything up. If you can, go above them because they are the ones that slow everything down. We were joking about Monica opening an Udruga. Uh, Sanyo and I, we have an Udruga and we went through the same experience. We started at the end of last year. It took us four months to open because unfortunately there's one lady that works and does that as her job who just slows everything down to the point where you actually want to give up um, unless you're very, you know, unless you're, you persevere and you're persistent. Now, if we could get rid of her, I'm sure you could open up an Udruga, a nonprofit, in a month. Because all it is is writing a statute, filling in some papers, paying a fee, and that's it. Okay? And you'll find that in all departments, like with MOP. You know, there's some people that are superstars, they tell you everything, and then there's the bottlenecks that say, oh, now I need this paper, oh, now I need this paper, oh, now I need this paper, now get me some stamps, yeah? Um, and I've seen that through working with all of you because you've asked me all different questions as well. Uh, and like I said, it's not just public sector, but it's also private institutions. Um, and the, the, one of the best things as well about working with this group and also connecting people to other Croatian um, or two Croatians or other foreign owners is everyone's open to share. And that's been really refreshing. None of this like dog eat dog, I'm not going to help you. I've seen restaurants help restaurants, bars help bars. Um, I've seen soap makers help soap makers. That's quite a recent example. That's why it's fresh in my mind. Um, and they're always willing to share. They're always willing to show you Excel spreadsheets, their forecasts, their forecasts, how much it costs to make a product. They're willing to share what goes into the product. Maybe they won't share one ingredient, but they'll share all the other things, right? They're willing to share what tools they use for digital media. They're willing to share their lawyer and their accountant with you, yeah? Even though you might end up taking that lawyer or accountant's time, it doesn't matter because they know what it's like doing business anywhere in the world, and therefore they want to support you doing that. So they're my, my, fi my five key learnings that when I was thinking about this last year, what I've, what I've really noticed. Um, this project is coming to an end, as Tony said, in the way it is now. It doesn't mean that everything has to come to an end. Um, there should be some sustainability. It's EU funding. They always talk about sustainability. Very few of them actually do that, which is why I've given you who've been involved in this a, a questionnaire that asks you, what have you been involved in? What would you want to continue? And how would that look like? Because for now, everything's been funded. But obviously, going forward, we'll either be asking for funding if we, for example, wanted to have a, an event like this every month, right, with food and drink and uh, space. This is free because it's got a split space. Um, just to know where we're moving to. Um, so thank you for filling those in. Um, you can leave them on your chair, and I'll collect them afterwards. Um, and that's all for me 
for now. Oh, I have a question. Alan. comment on th all three of those. Thank you, Alan. Yeah, so um, I'm going to start with the last one. Um, so Expat in Croatia has a great newsletter which updates you on a lot of these things, all, news ar all new articles, all updated articles. That's my resource at the moment. Um, in terms of sharing things in the groups that people are fully aware of, Expat in Split, Expat Meet Split, um, Digital Nomads in Split, all of those different groups, um, I guess then that's the other thing for people to be sharing it um, regularly. You obviously also have um, a few English source uh, media outlets like TC, uh, Total Croatian News who also share some of that stuff. So I think it's a definitely about sharing. Um, coming back to your point about marketing, so I've had a few suggestions for how the group could continue, uh, which I'm going to actually kind of formally approach, ask people's opinions. I'll share them with you now. One is completely informal, so kind of uh, like meetups, kind of what happens with certain groups where someone arranges drinks, but it's a business drink. One is a bit more formal, which is a business international, which has a structure. And again, you pick people from different sectors to represent, to connect. Um, but like I said, I'll share this more in detail, but just so you're aware. And the final idea was with the membership, opening an Udruga for foreign entrepreneurs to again, to make, yeah, exactly, uh, to make things uh, very formal and to be able to apply for funds and stuff like that, right? If you're if you're informal, you're less likely to apply for funds unless you do it in partnership. Whereas if you're a formal udruga, for example, nonprofit, it gives you that opportunity. Um, but I'll share that. That's going to come up in October. Um, talking about uh, funds for EU funds, thank you for reminding me. Marin and Valentina. So put your hand up if you know Valentina. Excellent. How do you know Valentina? No, that wasn't the answer. Because you're opening an udruga and applying for EU funds is the answer. Uh, They'll do a, I'll get them to do a workshop again. We held one last year, but it was online about all the EU funds available, how do you apply, where do you find out more information about them, and how do they fit into different streams, maybe with your company or not. So thanks for reminding me. We'll have that in uh, probably end of October. Yeah, I'll make sure I invite you personally. Um, any other comments or questions before? Yep, Miro. Finding six. Yeah, I think um, I think TCN used to have something 
which was around that. Does anyone know? I remember seeing entrepreneurs something. Anyone? Yeah. Um, as with as with everything, if it's shared, you know, like Ted Lasso, if it's shared, then you're more likely to see it. But yeah, I guess it's up for all of us to share these things with each other. Um, I don't know how often they do that, um, but there are there are some articles about that. So, um, okay. Any other questions, comments? Brilliant. Okay, I'm going to hand us over now to my. Oh, question. Hi. Tuesday thing carries on till the end of November, and then we will see. Uh, from nine till three is co-working, and we have a workshop every week from ten till two, uh, ten till twelve. Um, and it's not so much a workshop that it's a guided session, which means that I there's a theme. So next week is digital tools to keep you organized. And I'll be introducing tools, and then we'll basically be working together on how we can use those tools to stay organized. Um, and then there'll be some more um, introductory ones, like how to open a company in Croatia for people that don't have a company, and other ones about marketing sales, you know, some other things like we did before. It's kind of a, a duplication of the cycle. Last week, we did about strategy. Um, so yeah, keep an eye on the group. If you're not in the group, then tell me, and I'll add you to the group. Um, and yeah, they'll, they'll carry on going. So. so finally, last but not least, my colleague, oh, not him, Marin Urlich, who will give us our closing words. More than one word, please, Marin. Thank you very much. It's really nice to see you with this large number, knowing face, face, future face, and everything. Uh, hopefully, in short, I, I won't bug you their food already there. Uh, well, inception for this project started about six years ago when I met this guy here. And I always remember like first coffee we ever had. So it was like most cultural exchange of ideas. He went to the coffee with his workbook and pen and we sit down and was like spending, oh, now we talk about football, Arsenal, Hajduk and stuff like that. He was like, what's your strategy? What are your goals? <laughs> In some time, he learned that coffee is a decision maker here in Croatia. We also learned that you should talk about business sometimes to coffee, but not always. And so having him around for six years and having some of you, which I'm most excited and privileged to meet you with your ideas and as a friends, it was really nice experience having you all. Uh, official experience will last for two more months. Uh, till the end of the year, we have this project and uh, space for using. After that, we are working with the city of Split to continue to use this space and ideas that we could actually promote. Unfortunately, as we are working in the NGO, we don't have outside sources for continue projects without new funding. We're trying to fund something else. But in the meantime, we'll definitely stay in touch to Facebook, to the online forums, and everything going on. So I would like to thank you, everybody, for joining today. For joining this project, for signing up papers, uh, donating your kidneys and stuff like you ever signed and you never read it what you are signing everything. Trust me, especially when you're going to the police and stuff like that, read what's going on. So uh, in short, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, my team, for this everything going on. Future, uh, we will hopefully uh, be still alive without COVID and any other things going on. So you're more than welcome each Tuesday to come here. We'll be around. And as my colleague Sanya said, we don't have all the answers, but we can point you in the right direction to ask, and hopefully not 70 doors, just one or two doors to knock down. So behind you, there is food. That's always good to have around. Uh, have uh, your fun, enjoy, ask questions, and we'll see you all around here. That's it, short and light. Thank you very much. No, no questions, right? Thank you. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, as uh, as Marin said, food is through there, provided today by the Daltonist. Uh, just leave the piece of papers on your chair. I'll collect them. Uh, final thank you to um, the guys at MCARD C for giving us this place. Grad Split for um, for all of us, finally. And for Nick and his team for doing live stream. This will be on Cedra Split's Facebook. Um, so you're always able to watch it again and again and again. And maybe make gifts out of uh, Sarah's face or Sanya's face. That's my plan. Go and eat 